Have you ever dreamt of creating worlds, of forging realities that challenge the mundane, of not just playing a game, but breathing life into it? You see, in the realm of virtual reality, we're not just gamers or developers. We're pioneers venturing into the vast expanse of the digital frontier. Imagine you just have seven days a week to dream, design, and develop a race against time. But this isn't any regular game jam. This is VR, where the stakes are higher and the challenges are more thrilling. If you want to test your skills and see how much you know about VR development, if you have that game idea that you've just been kind of thinking about or you don't even really know where to start, then join the game jam down in the description. Me and Valum and VR with Andrew are all collaborating together to host a game jam that's starting at the end of June. So if you're watching this before then, then I highly encourage you to jump in and join with the hundreds of other people who are participating. It's going to be super fun. Last year we had a, a lot of really fun, really cool game submissions. And so who knows, you might get featured on the channel. What if I told you that these worlds we lose ourselves in started as mere ideas during a crunch time event like a VR game jam? That the exhilarating escape you just experienced was born from a weekend of relentless brainstorming, programming, and probably no sleep. Today, we dive into the depths of what it takes to succeed in a VR game jam. We'll explore the history, the grit, the technique, and the, the sheer magic that transforms a spark of an idea into a virtual world that captivates millions. This is Mastering the Virtual Reality, How to Prepare for a VR Game Jam. Before we plunge into the immersive world of VR game jams, let's take a journey back in time to an era when computers were as big as rooms and pixelated Pong was the cutting edge of gaming technology. This was the late 60s, the genesis of virtual reality. The term virtual reality was coined by Jaron Lanier in 1987, but the concept, the dream of an immersive alternate reality, dates back way further. One of the earliest instances of a VR-like experience was the Sword of Damocles, created by Ivan Sutherland in 1968. There was a mechanical arm suspended from the ceiling and a bulky headset. It was more of a contraption than what we would recognize as VR today, but it was the start of something revolutionary. Since then, VR has made enormous strides, from the rudimentary VR of the 60s and 70s to the home systems of the 90s, and finally, to the highly immersive systems that we see today. It's been a long journey of trials, failures, and breathtaking achievements. But where does the concept of a game jam fit into this journey? So a game jam was popularized in the early 2000s through a concept of intense, short-term collaborative game creation and can be traced back to the late 90s. The indie game jam initiated in 2002 is considered one of the earliest. Since then, game jams have been a staple of the gaming community. Events like Global Game Jam have brought together thousands of developers from around the world and give birth to creative out-of-the-box game concepts. As VR technology has become more accessible, it was only a matter of time before it seeped into the game jam culture. And the first VR game jam started happening around the mid-2010s, but today, VR game jams are a hotbed of innovation and a meeting point of technology and creativity where developers can push the boundary of what's possible in virtual reality. And me and Valum and a few other of the VR YouTubers here host one every single year. But how do you tap into this heritage of innovation and creativity and make the most out of this VR game jam? So let's delve into some specifics of how you would go about maximizing your time and maximizing this medium that we so love. And if you are getting ready for a VR game jam, then I highly encourage you to check out the VR Creator Academy. We have over 600 students in the course and it is really helping a lot of people learn VR development. We have gotten messages from several people who have actually gotten jobs by going through this course. So you'll learn all the steps from basic Unity knowledge to a deep dive in the XR Interaction Toolkit 
and even a whole multiplayer section and a whole optimization section taught by Willem and Andrew. It's over 130 lessons at this point, and uh, it's we're still going. It's a great resource for learning VR development. Everything is kept up to date, so you don't have to worry about slogging through YouTube and all the outdated tutorials. So if you're interested in really upping your VR development game, then uh, check out the VR Creator Academy course down in the description. Creating for VR is a different ballgame altogether. The game mechanics, the design, the narrative, everything needs to be reimagined pretty much. As developers, we need to account for physical space, for motion sickness, for accessibility, and just the sheer novelty of the medium. But herein lies the thrill of VR development. Its immersive nature offers unparalleled opportunities for creativity and innovation. So imagine orchestrating a zero-gravity battle or recreating a historical event with such realism that players feel like they've time-traveled. Yet, we also have to be mindful. What makes VR exciting also makes it challenging. <laughs> Motion sickness is a huge concern, and designing games that are exciting, but at the same time comfortable, is quite the balance. Now, if you're going to go off and do this on your own, assembling this toolkit might be a little daunting. But remember, the beauty of a game jam lies in its diversity. You'll find artists, programmers, designers, sound engineers, writers, and probably a lot more than I can name, all under one roof. And this is the melting pot of talents and ideas that make the game jam such a unique and exciting place to hang out and create. The key really is to understand your team member's strengths and interests and to assign the correct roles accordingly. So the programmer could focus on game mechanics, artist on the game aesthetics, the designer on level design and user experience, and then the sound engineer obviously would focus on the soundscape. But remember, even though you're going to be working on this game in different sections, Collaboration doesn't mean silos. Good communication is vital, and every decision should be a team decision. So constructive feedback should flow freely, and compromises may need to be made for the good of the project. And I highly recommend either creating your own little Discord group, jumping into a call, or even meeting in person if it's possible. But how do you go from a team of talented people in a game jam to a success story where you get high in the rankings. How do you make the most of this ticking clock in a game jam? Let's focus on the first significant milestone of your VR game jam experience, ideation and planning. Ideation's where the magic begins. It's the spark that ignites the creative process and is the seed from which your game will grow and blossom into this beautiful magical thing. So every member should be encouraged to propose new ideas no matter how wild or out of the box they might seem. It's all going to be related to the theme of the game jam that gets posted right when the game jam starts and just come up with as many wild ideas as possible. When the theme is revealed, take time to explore it from lots of different angles. Don't rush this process. I know lots of people tend to just pick the first interesting idea that they can think of and just follow that. But let the ideas marinate in your minds trigger some connections, conjure up some images, and even throw it into AI, have it come up with some, you know, design concept drawings or something and help you come up with some ideas. Peruse the asset store and see if anything in there sparks an idea for you. So I highly encourage you to take some time on this. I know it's going to seem like it is wasting time, but it's really not. This is one of the most important parts. Once you've agreed on a game concept, it's time for planning. This is where you map out your game, defining its mechanics, its visuals, its sounds, the narrative, and this is really all about asking the right questions. So what experience do you want to give the player? What unique features are gonna make your game stand out from all the other ones that have the same theme? And then how are you gonna manage the limitations of your time and resources? It's really important to scope it. Cut it in half and cut it in half again is what you'll hear people say again and again when you're creating any games, but especially game jams. The next part would be to break this plan down into smaller tasks and assign them to each team member based on their roles and strengths. And I highly encourage using some kind of task manager here like Trello or Asana if you want to get crazy or even just Notion, something that you can stay organized with and know what you need to do and what you need to prioritize. 
I would first prioritize the core gameplay mechanics and focus on creating a minimum viable product first. So if you're doing a grappling hook game, make the grappling hook work first, and then you can start to add bells and whistles later if the time allows. And this is when we get into the heart of the game jam. And this is really just execution and polishing. The execution stage is where your game begins to take shape. It's about transforming those abstract ideas and detailed plans into this tangible reality. So programmers will be coding the game mechanics, ensuring the controls are intuitive and responsive. Artists and designers are gonna breathe life into the game world. They craft the environments, the characters, the objects. They're the architects of the immersion, ensuring that the visual experience is as captivating as the gameplay. And don't forget about sound. Don't forget about sound. So the sound engineers, you're the maestros of the game's soundscape. They're responsible for the game's music, the sound effects, and the overall audio experience. Sound design and VR can make or break immersion, and it's super, super crucial and is as crucial or more than any other aspect of your game. As the game takes shape, testing is going to become more and more essential. Play test your game often and make sure to make some adjustments based on that feedback. So fix bugs, fine tune controls, tweak your difficulty levels and strive for a game that's not just functional, but also enjoyable and fun to play. This is where you make your game fun is by play testing over and over and over again and making it just that much better every single time. And finally, we reach the polishing stage. This is where you add the cherries on top to improve the visuals, refine the sound, enhance the user interface, but remember less is often more. A clean, smooth experience trumps a cluttered one with unnecessary frills of extra stuff that you threw in there that took more time than it should have. And then before you know it, time's up. You've gone from a blank canvas to a playable VR game. First, you're going to need to present your game. And this really just comes from the page that your game is posted to. So making sure you have really good screenshots, you explain your ideas, your choices, the challenges you encountered. And remember, a good pitch is more than just a summary. It's a story. What's the story of your game? So make sure to include that in the description of your game and also lots of screenshots. And if you can, a short video of how your game plays would be ideal. Oh, and don't forget to add what the controls are. And then once you start getting feedback, it's a gold mine of insights and learning. So listen carefully, take notes. And even if you don't win, the expertise and the playability of other developers playing your game is gonna be crucial because you can then make adjustments and even take your game to the next level. And as you're going through this whole process, remember Game Jam is a fantastic networking opportunity. You're gonna be surrounded by like-minded individuals passionate about VR and game development. So don't let those connections fade away. Keep in touch, get people's Discord IDs or numbers or emails, and who knows, you know, these relationships might lead to publishers or partners or just creating your own game studio. But what about the game? The journey doesn't have to stop here. Many Game Jam projects have evolved into fully developed games that are released on platforms like Steam or the Meta Store. And if you believe in your game, if you're passionate about it, then consider taking it to the next level. You'd be surprised at how many games have started from Game Jams, or at least the idea or the concept that the Game Jam started and then they scrapped and basically re created it in a better, more, more timely manner, and it went off to become a really solid game that ends up getting published and making a lot of money. But in the end, a VR game jam is more than just a competition. It's an experience, a journey, and it's about learning, growing, creating, and collaborating. It's about pushing your limits, testing your skills, and most importantly, they're pretty fun. <laughs> so as we wrap up our journey into the world of VR game jams, remember, in the realm of game development, it's never really game over, it's always game on. <laughs>